glucolysis for glucose. That's the key thing. So if you have decreased HMP shunt, which happens in G6PD deficiency, then all the glucose that was going to HMP shunt, now it's going to have to go through glycolysis. So you're going to get increased glycolysis. Alright. So the most important enzyme in HMP shunt is G6PD or glucose. 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenase. That's your that's your G6PD. Now what is uh, what is the byproduct of HMP shunt or HMP pathway? Well, it causes a lot of NAD, NADPH to be produced. Okay. So one of the things you should be thinking about is if you have a high NADPH already, that's going to inhibit this major enzyme. Okay, so that's so one of the major functions of HMP pathway is to produce NADPH. So high NADPH inhibits the pathway. Now we talked about its deficiency. Okay, um, G6P deficiency uh, is usually caused, or basically what it does, it leads to increased resistance to malaria. So that's why it's more common in African Americans, uh, because in Africa there's a high prevalence of, of malaria, and so anything that uh, that makes you a little more resistant to malaria is actually selective. Um, by the way, remember malaria is P. The bug name is P. falciparum. And what it does, uh, if it's deficient, uh, not only it causes resistance to malaria, which is a good thing, but the bad thing it causes is it causes hemolytic anemia. All right, this is the anemia where you get Heinz bodies. Heinz bodies. Now remember, with these patients, with these people, uh, what happens is. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of tell you as we kind of go through. I'll, as I tell you about the HMP pathway, I'll tell you why you get the hemolytic anemia. Uh, anyways, what's the substrate for HMP? Glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate. And uh, it goes through HMP. And what it does, it gives you fructose. 6-phosphate. One thing it can give you. Now, fructose 6 phosphate can eventually go into glycolysis. All right, it gives you NADPH, which I told you it does. I remember NADPH is an antioxidant. It's also used up for synthesis of many things in the body, like fatty acid synthesis. Okay, and finally, it gives you ribose. Remember, ribose is a 5-carbon sugar, and it's used for DNA and RNA, okay, synthesis. So, one of the major things that it does um, um, is, it, you know, how it leads to this anemia is what we're going to talk about right now. Now, red blood cells, so we're just talking about G6P deficiency, okay, red blood cells, they're dealing with a lot of oxygen. That's what they're binding to, they're binding to oxygen. So they produce a lot of superoxides. Okay, that's a very strong radical, all right? Now, when this superoxide is produced, uh, it depends on the reduced glutathione to neutralize these, these radicals. So red blood cells produce superoxide and then depend Glutathione for neutralizing these radicals, all right? Which means as long as you got reduced glutathione, who cares if you make superoxides because you can take care of it, all right? Now, if I don't have, in the absence of reduced glutathione, then the hemoglobins, which usually have a 2 plus iron in them, which is, that's the way it should be, all of a sudden end up with a 3 plus iron. Now, that's no longer called hemoglobin, that's called methyl. Now, these things are not 
functional anymore. And because now the iron is D plus, they begin to clump together and they fall and then precipitate as highest bodies. That's why in G6B deficiency, you have highest bodies. Highest body just means the hemoglobins have clumped up all together, no longer functional, and are precipitating inside the cells. Now, so all of this is bad, right? We don't want this because that means that our cells are going to die. That red blood cells are going to die. So how do we keep the right amount of reduced glutathione in the system so we can neutralize superoxides that are being produced? Well, the reduction of the glutathione requires NADPH, right? which is a byproduct of the HMP pathway, which we just mentioned. And it requires G6PD because that's the major enzymes of HMP, all right? Now, if somebody already has G6PD deficiency, which means they're only making very little amount of NADPH from their HMP pathway, which means as long as there's not a lot of superoxides being produced, the body does fine, all right? But there are conditions where you have increased superoxide production, all right? And you need to know what those conditions are. Infections will cause increased superoxide production. Sulfur drugs will do this. Spava beans will do it. Anything that has a lot of oxidizing stuff in it will do that. Will cause more superoxide production. And if you are G6 